All right, guys. Well, this is the NPC firmware update procedure. So we're going to set this into update mode on the actual NPC hardware. It does this transferring. I'm going to speed this part of the video up. Then it goes into programming update. It does take a while for this, but it doesn't change anything on the hardware screen. Then it's done. Then you'll see this hang here for a bit. It restarts. Then it shows the screen for a little bit. Then this is in real time, so I haven't sped this bit up so you can see this updating part is just it's not that long. So just hang into there. And then bang, we're done. So I'm just going to load a project that I've done. Where is it? Retro, there it is. Load that. Wait for that to load. Dum -da -dum -da -dum. And there it is. Now let's go check in the settings. There it is, 2.4. Beautiful. Great. Okay, hi guys. This is the Akai MPC Live, and I've just updated the firmware to 2.4, the latest firmware. And um, yeah, so I've actually not even really tried this. Uh, literally just, you saw the video of me just doing the firmware update, and now I've just plonked her on to my normal little green mat here. I don't usually have the MPC over here, but I thought this is a great opportunity to kind of for you guys to experience how I experience stuff. Maybe we can have a chat in the dialogue below, but I don't know, like this is the new update. I've been actually really, really excited about this one because I've been told that they've fixed the clips in this. And what it used to do is uh, if you were on clips um, in your MIDI thing here, it would launch clips and everything beautifully. But if you then went to a different track, um, it would just literally stop playing the clips that you'd launched and it would all just all stop. Unless those clips were sequenced in a track, they would literally just stop and you couldn't kind of manipulate tracks by using the clip launcher. And there's ways around it, but I don't know. I just, I just thought that th that was lacking and it gave us more flexibility if we were able to uh, launch clips, forget about what we've launched, go and do some other stuff. Um, maybe we might want to affect an audio track with the Q, the, sorry, with the XY effects. I don't know. There's a whole stack of stuff that we would not be able to do, but at the same time, keep those clips playing. So this is a track that you guys might know I did a while back. It's on my latest album link. It's called Retro. This is actually the original recording that I did of this song. It's actually originally produced on the MPC light before I went and mastered it and all that sort of stuff. So it's a bit raw, but it's got all clips and everything in it. And I thought, well, save me having to set up something for this video. Why don't I just use something that I've already got? And let's just see whether this clips thing is fixed. So, right, let's go into, I guess let's go into our track channel mixer and we should hear, if we're on audio tracks, we should hear, we're just muting that. Everything's muted there. We're on programs, we should hear the drums. Cool. And I'll just mute the audio track. So if I hit play start, we just got the drums going, right? And so let's get our audio track going. All right, now that's going. So let's go back to main and let's choose the clip track, right? Which is this one. Now, I can launch any, any clip I guess in here, like my rap, my crappy rap. Now, let's change screens. I'm on a different track now. Let's go into here. Yeah, it's working. Now that wasn't a repeated track, so that probably worked similar to how it used to. So let's try something that repeats. drone does. Okay, let's keep that running. Change screens. That should just keep repeating itself, right? Go into an audio track. So it 
to that to cycle around. Yeah, so that's beautiful, that's working now. And I've just launched that clip manually um, instead of sequencing it. And you can hear that me saying retro, that's sequenced. So let's just stop for a sec, go back to the clip track. Go back to the sequencer. You can see that I'm that pad there is where I'm saying retro. Okay, that's it there. That's the only thing that's sequenced in this clip track is me saying retro, which is this pad here. There it goes. So let's go back to where we were before. Actually, no, let's go back to here. Start the drone again and go to an audio track. And let's now, we know that's working, so let's now unmute this. Okay, and let's try some XY effects. Yeah, and the clip's still going beautifully. Cool. A lot more control now over this. This is really going to get creative for us guys. Now. That's a definite, yes, that's fixed the clips. Um, look, we've got to go and use it more to see if it's got any dramas, but that's a big thumbs up there. Okay, so the other one is that it's added a whole bunch of new effects in here. One of the things that everyone's been really, really, really waiting for is the, like a side chain effect. And the new one they brought in is called Mother Ducker. Um, I don't know if I've seen it in here, to be honest. I've, saw, I've seen the air effects, which are in here, but let's, anyway, let's have a look. Um, so we go into menu, channel mixer, and let's go to our mini log um, audio track here. And we'll go to insert and we can see that I've got a delay in here. So let's bring that up. Let's see if I click on here. And so there's our air. There's our Kai, right? So where is this mother ducker? Is that in Akai? There's mother ducker, right? Don't really know, I've never actually read any instructions on this, so I'm gonna look a complete fool. Um, so please don't thumbs down me here, but I'm guessing because this is my bass track, this won't be the input, this will be the actual um, sidechain effect. Let's just leave it as its default. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to main, sorry, to menu, track mixer, programs, and I'm gonna put under that program, I'm going to add the Mother Ducker input. I'm guessing this is how it works. So this will be our input to our side chain. That's going to bus one, and we can change the bus. Let's let's send it to bus eight, just because we know that that definitely we can, right? So there's eight buses. Let's go back there. Programs now to audio back to here. Click on there edit that, change that to bus 8. Now we should see. Now what we're going to need to do is let's mute our program track. Let's go back to, let's mute that. All right, and let's See the beat there. Oh, I don't even know how to use this thing. Put it on auto. Go back to our channel mixer. Mute. Probably need to play with that some more, but yeah, it's there. Okay, it's looking pretty cool. While we were, we were just in the effects before and we saw those air effects, which were the new ones. Let's go back to those. 
Um, what can we choose? Uh, let's just get rid of this mother backer for a minute. Um, God, there's a lot of effects in the Akai side. So we've got all the Akai ones, and I've added some. Plus, there's all these new, these new air ones. There's so many. That's pretty cool. And I've seen some of these using them as VSTs over the years. So they're not they're not foreign to me. Um, Pumper's pretty cool. Let's have a look at Pumper. So let's just mute some stuff. Right, that's muted. You can hear it now. Here we go. That sounds cool. It's really giving it a different vibe. So you can just put a mic in here and bah. Wow. New effects without even putting anything plugged into this. How cool. Let's launch some clips. We're in the clips now. Let's get uh, let's get a stupid rap going. Ready, set. I'm supposed to go retro there. <laughs> I was out of time. There it goes. <laughs> what can we do? Different baseline. Cut samples here. New. What's this note repeat like on this? Stuff. This never made it into the final song, this, these little ad lib things. We can go back while we've got those clips playing because it now works properly. And we can go back to our mini log baseline, uh, go to inserts, click on that baby, and turn the pumper off. It's kind of seamless. Go back to our clips. probably want to have those clips played to the end, program them to play to the end, and we just hit this. And then you have them play to the end, wait for this bar to finish, and then you hit this, into the chorus, back into the strings, coming up now. When I played that, there's a video of me doing that song on this channel live, uh, most of the gear was plugged into a mixer and this was all sequencing it. So I, the instruments that you hear recorded in here, I plugged into the back and sampled it in here, but that actual video, you can hear the instruments live recorded straight to a mixer. The good thing about the MIDI, this side of it, is that when you go to menu, you can hit a track mute part. And this is where I think this is gonna be probably my my favorite sort of way to use this. I'm gonna have my MIDI stuff um, unmuting and muting, and then I'm gonna hit main, and I'm gonna be on straight back onto clips. Gonna be launching clips, going back to main, back to track, bang, bang, bang. Now, I won't have to do the swappity swappity like that because I'm gonna have a, a MIDI controller plugged in to this uh, because the new MIDI mapping is enabled on this 
and it's got muting and all that sort of ability on there. So I use one of these, a MPC Mini, APC Mini, sorry. And it's got, these are my track level faders, okay? And I can program these to, gosh, do anything, mute, launch clips, whatever I want. So this is gonna be, you know, next to the MPC, next to it, wherever. Left, right, front, back. Can we zoom out on this? Let's have a look. How far back can we go? Back and you can see my messy desk. Yay! Something like that. So, performance wise, you know, that's not bad. These are the faders. I think it's a plan, guys. What do you reckon? This is pretty much a what is that? that what did they call the new thing? An APC force, or just a force? So, you know, the force is basically a glorified clip launcher sampler, and this is a glorified sequencer sampler. So they're pretty. There's pretty fair bit of crossover on the two products, but I think with some media mapping, they fixed the clip launching now on this. This is going to be a nice little addition. Um, I might want to get that so that the you know put something underneath it so that it's up on the same level, makes it more kind of tactile. But yeah. Anyway, guys, that's a quick look muck around with the new Akai MPC Live slash X. I don't have an X, so I'm not rich enough. No, I'm just joking. I just don't want one. I want this is I don't know if you'd notice, but this isn't even plugged in. Look at that, it's mobile. Um, that's why I bought it because it's mobile. I can sit it on my lap on the bus. Actually, I don't catch buses. I don't even know why I said that. I have sat it on my lap on the plane a couple of times. Um, I think I even did a video of that. Did a video of it, me using it in a hotel room. These things are amazing. Seriously, those who hate this, <laughs> go to Hate Land. You're missing out. I've made so many songs with this thing. It's brilliant. Anyway, guys, we'll talk to you all later. Um, please have a discussion about this. I'm going to join in in the comments below. That's what it's there for. Tell me what you think. If you've got an MPC Live or Live X or X, even if it's probably called an X properly, no, it's called an X. I'm just being a tongue twister. Um, tell me if you like the new force that they've just announced. I think that's that stole the NAM show. I don't know why that. I don't know if it won or not, but I think that should have won the thing of the NAM. What do you call it? Product of NAM. Uh, I'm an Australian. I don't get to see NAM, so you know, who cares? Uh, by the time we get stuff down here, um, you know, you guys have you guys are already teleporting and traveling in space, and we've probably just got the. Uh, the latest Behringer products down here in Australia. So, sorry, just a bad joke. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later on. See ya.